which were all raised in the lab. And then somehow they walked their way out of the labs. Hey everyone, it's Ben and Ashley. We are back again and we are discussing another medical medium podcast. And this one's a good one. You're going to want to stay tuned for this one. It is all about eggs. Yes. You know, we've all eaten eggs our whole lives and the information that Anthony's bringing to the table in this podcast sheds light on some of the, not only some of the history of the eggs, but how eggs affect us and how they affect our health. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Anthony talks about why you shouldn't eat eggs in all of his books. Mm -hmm. But in this podcast, he goes into some deep detail about how eggs were actually turned against us as a weapon. Yeah, they were weaponized against us. Yes. So... What he goes into is pathology, which is the farming of pathogens. This was started in the early 1900s and a group of people wanted to figure out how they could raise pathogens and keep them alive and create new pathogens and keep those pathogens alive. So they had to figure out what fuel would allow these things to keep going right? yeah and so they they tried all sorts of different foods to feed them mm -hmm. you know the feeding was all done being done uh, using human blood they tried using animal blood and that didn't work mm -hmm. they started using human blood and the reason human blood worked so well with these pathogens was human blood all has traces of mercury in them. right because prior to that, for thousands of years, doctors were giving people mercury thinking it would help them when really it mm -hmm. wasn't. So it's in our blood as it's passed down generation to generation. Yeah, and then the mercury didn't really uh, get the, the viruses moving, didn't really colonize, but it kept the viruses alive. Right. So they had that. So they knew, okay, human blood is what we're going to use. Now, what what fuel, what food are we going to give them to, to keep, them, keep them alive and keep them going. And so then they, they tried all sorts of different foods. They tried meat. They tried sugar. You know, the meat didn't work. The sugar actually killed the pathogens. So right. they knew that wasn't an option. So fruit, which is a good sugar, will kill pathogens. So that's yes. That's one of the discoveries they found. And then meat, meat didn't do it. And they tried all sorts of other different foods. And then this one patient, he came in and... They used his blood. They used his blood and the pathogens were just going nuts. They were colonizing and they were doing everything that they they wanted to accomplish. Yeah, and they were, so they were like, okay... What is in this guy's blood that is allowing these pathogens to thrive so well? So they asked him about his diet and he's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm an egg farmer and I eat eggs like three times a day, lots of eggs, mm -hmm. you know? And they were like, oh, bingo. Yeah, totally. That's yeah. what's going to feed them. So then they figured it out. Eggs feed pathogens, viruses and bacteria. And so... They knew they were onto something. And then eventually, over time, they tested with other people and they proved their theory was right. And they decided, well, why are we even using human blood? Let's just use an egg. Mm -hmm. And so they started putting the virus directly into the egg. And by putting it directly into the egg, they had to add something else they had to add the mercury so they added traces of mercury in the egg with the virus and they had done it you know the viruses were going bonkers they were going crazy they, they loved it so that's kind of where it led to I guess right it started with the human blood and then they were just doing it directly in the eggs mm -hmm. yeah he even said that 
the outside of the eggshell they were surviving on. Yeah, because the outside of the the eggshell, there's bacteria on it. I mean, you look at like uh, mayo, for example. They always tell you not to leave mayo out, out in the sun, right? Right, because it'll spoil. So and that's because it collects bacteria, and the bacteria is living on it because mm -hmm. it has the egg in it. And so, and so, they, as long as they kept the egg at the right temperature then these viruses were going crazy. Yeah. Okay, so now that they found the secret sauce to mm -hmm. allowing these things to just thrive and reproduce, early 1900s until now, like a good 120 years, they've managed to create tons of different varieties. You know, just like we farm here, we've got all these different varieties of fruits and veggies and you know, there's so many different subgroups of, say, celery, broccoli. There's all different types of varieties. They did this with pathogens. So there's over now 60 varieties of just the Epstein-Barr virus. There's around 30 different uh, varieties of the shingles virus. There's not just one. There's 30 or even more. Streptococcus, which is like strep strep throat there are around a hundred different varieties and then like 50 different subgroups hmm. it's <laughs> like a lot. insane and then you have cold sores which are from a virus there's herpes um, one and two there's uh, HHV 6 7 and then there's like 10 through 16 um, there's the cetomegalovirus um, there's HIV and then there's HPV, which were all raised in the lab. Wow. <laughs> well, and then somehow they walked their way out of the labs. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, we why are we told to keep eating eggs? Like, why? Yeah. If, why is that happening? If, if everybody knew how bad they actually were for you. Yeah. Why would they be telling us to eat more eggs? Right. And you might be thinking, oh, I eat eggs and I feel perfectly fine. That's great. But eventually, things could get caught up in your body. You could easily catch a virus or a bacteria. And then you're just adding more fuel to the fire with eggs and then more pathogens that you're collecting along the way. Yeah, I remember reading an article and it was about this woman I think she lived to be like 106 and mm -hmm. she when she was asked well how did you live so long how are you 106 right now what do you what do you say is that the, the thing that you're doing that's led you to live so long and she said eggs she said that she'd have two eggs a day mm -hmm. and that's why she ended up living so long well someone like that could not have any pathogens. Or very little. Very little, yeah. yeah. Or, or some of the other things that, that go together. She might not have mercury going on. She mm -hmm. might not have heavy metals. She might yeah. not have, you know, all these crazy pathogens. Maybe she's got a less aggressive type path, pathogen. So a lot of variables there. But yeah, Anthony always says that the older generations a lot of times can eat whatever they want because they don't have as many pathogens. So they're, they're okay to eat the gluten, the bread, the eggs, things like that. It doesn't affect them. And you have to be careful because there's eggs in a lot of things. Not just, you know, it's not just, we're not just talking about hard boiled, scrambled, you know, your breakfast eggs. We're talking about products made with eggs in it that yeah, we've been eating for a lifetime. That's going to feed it too. <laughs> so like, you know, breads, pastries, cakes, um, pasta, pastas, pizza, mayo, a lot of the cookies, a lot of things mm -hmm. have eggs and it's very widely used. Um, there are plenty of egg replacements. Us, we don't use eggs, but if we're, say we're baking something, you can use flack egg. Mm -hmm works just as great, nice and sticky. Look up how to make a flat cake. 
Yeah, but eggs are in everything. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even realize you're eating the products with eggs in them. So, you know, if you're watching this, go look in your cabinet. See, yeah. <laughs> you know, see what sort of products have eggs in them. They're in everything. And then some of you might be saying, oh, well, I don't eat eggs anymore. I'm good. I'm not feeding the pathogens. But what Anthony says, and this is so crazy, is that mm -hmm. eggs stick, stay in your liver a lifetime unless you cleanse them out. Yeah, the residue. The residue of eggs stays in your body. I mean, we've been doing this almost four years, and I'm sure that egg residue is still in our bodies. Yeah, we've got a lot of years of eggs to clean out. If you guys are like, okay, well, how can I get this out? Go watch how we eat in a day. Yeah. We show you how we eat in a day, and that is how your body can naturally cleanse, you know, through eating fruits and veggies, holding your fats off, lowering your fats, allowing your body to cleanse. All right, so let's talk about what is actually in the eggs that is allowing these viruses and bacteria to thrive. Well, what is an egg? An egg is an undeveloped chick, right. which then eventually would hatch and turn into a chicken. Mm -hmm. So as that chick is being developed in the egg, it needs stuff to grow. It needs proteins, it needs enzymes, and it needs hormones. Mm -hmm. And how it works in our body is how it works for a chicken. But rather than the chicken growing, we're putting that egg in our body and those proteins, enzymes, and hormones are then going to the virus right. to help the virus grow mm -hmm. and colonize and become stronger. Right. So it's, th this was one thing that kind of blew my mind. Like, right. so we're basically giving the virus the stuff a chicken would use t to, to grow. grow. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, and then let's say like you eat an egg right so you consume that egg mm -hmm. in your mouth down your esophagus into your small intestinal tract and and as it's going down there it's like this slimy gooey glue you know and so it kind of cakes to your intestinal lining mm -hmm. then it feeds you know h pylori feeds pathogens viruses bacteria and then eventually makes its way into the paddock portal vein and through the bloodstream, through the paddock portal vein, it makes its way to the liver. Yeah. That's where the party's at. <laughs> so then the liver is trying to collect it, right, and protect your body. And then eventually, you know, it's collecting tons of this egg goo in your liver and that you know, is feeding on other things that are in your liver, like mercury and egg and things like that, or the, the viruses in there are feeding off of the egg. And then those pathogens, then when they go to the bathroom, they release a neurotoxin. Mm -hmm. And that neurotoxin then creates these symptoms. And so viruses, they don't like eat. They don't have a mouth. They don't have a mouth, they don't have teeth, They they eat though, they feed, and they, how they feed is through their membrane. They have like a, mm -hmm. a crust around the virus. They've got like a membrane and they absorb, they absorb like the, the trace particles from the egg mm -hmm. into their membrane and then that's how they, f they feed. And then, yep. like you said, they... When they have to go to the bathroom, then it's just coming out of their membrane. Totally. Right? Totally. So it, it could create anything from a rash to you could gain a bunch of weight to heart palpitations fatigue is another big one i mm -hmm. get migraines all the time yeah. so a lot of that stuff is is caused by an overburdened liver a liver that's been maxed out yeah. and so that's that's where i was eventually led until we found medical medium and used his information to heal yeah and so with all those symptoms that i was dealing with when I went to the doctor and said, this is what I'm going through, they suggested eating two eggs a day. I remember. That was kind we of the solution. a lot of eggs. So we were eating a ton of them. A lot of hard-boiled eggs. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not the doctor's fault, right? Yeah. They don't, 
they're not given the information that Anthony is giving to us. They're taught something they're, completely different. Yeah, research, research and science out there is pushing the eggs on the health world and on the doctors, things like that. That's why it's known as like this healthy food that everyone should be eating. Yeah, and it's not the doctor's fault. They don't, you know, they don't know this information. They, you know, you go to the doctor or your your health expert or your acupuncturist or chiropractor. Right. I mean, we're talking all all doctors and all different sorts of fields. They all just want to help us, but they they're taught this that eggs are the health like one of the healthiest things ever, right? Well, they don't know why we're sick in the first place. Yeah, that too. And you've got research and science, which is typically paid for, and that's where they're getting fed their information. So, yeah, you're right. They don't know that eggs cause these problems. And eventually you just keep going to the doctor, doctor, and doctor, and they just want to get you out of their office. So they just give you a label, and now that you have a label, yeah. you just continue to worry even more because now you have this label that there's no cure for. Eggs lower your immune system. Totally. Right? And the thing Anthony talked about with women is that, for example, when a, when a woman is pregnant, her immune system is lowered by like 50% or something because the other half is going to the baby. And if she's eating eggs, this is going to cause some problems down the road or maybe even during her pregnancy. And then when a woman gives birth, her immune system is like, most of it is going towards the baby. And then after birth as well, that's when a lot of women start to see health issues. You know, that's when a lot of women are getting like a Hashimoto's um, diagnosis or their hair is falling out. Just you know, postpartum depression, there's so many things that happen to women after they have a baby and it's usually because something is happening in their body and if they're eating eggs, it's gonna be making it worse because that is feeding the viruses and the bacteria that's causing all of those issues. And a lot of times, women are told to eat eggs. Mm -hmm. they, they're told to eat protein. And those eggs, um, they're going to cause reproductive issues. They, they, those are what feed cysts or mm -hmm. what cause cysts to, to develop. And then he was also saying that uh, breast cancer patients, patients that have cancer, are told to eat more eggs. Yep, and breast cancer is caused by a variety of Epstein-Barr. Yeah, so you're now feeding the virus with eggs, mm -hmm. and that's not going to cure your cancer. Yeah. That's going to make it worse. So. It doesn't matter what type of eggs you're eating. Eggs are eggs, and they all are going to do the same thing. So it doesn't matter if they're organic. doesn't matter if they're free-range. doesn't matter if they're grass-fed, hormone-free. You know, an egg is an egg, and it's going to feed the bugs. Yep. And, you know, as we grow older over time, these bugs, they continue to spread. So we pick up more bugs, and... We can t if we continue to eat eggs, then the eggs are going to sit there. You know, mercury is in everybody. You learned that from us earlier, that mercury continues to sit in the body, and so do all of the other environmental toxins. Yeah, so let's tell them how they can cleanse this out of their body. So the problem is what? The eggs, the pathogens, and the mercury, right? Yeah because yeah. all three of those things are causing the pathogens to thrive. So we need to do some things to clean up our mm -hmm. health. What so are, number one thing should be remove the eggs. Stop eating the eggs. Throw them out. Don't even give them to your neighbor. <laughs> Save them. Throw them out, right? Go watch our video on what we eat in a day, and that will show you how we cleanse every single day. Mm -hmm. First thing in the morning is you'll see we do lemon water. Lemon water is going to help gently flush your liver. And then celery juice, come on, celery juice is like the most important yes. thing. It, <laughs> it, it flushes the liver. It 
breaks down the membrane of the virus. So yeah. remember that membrane? That's how it feeds. It breaks that membrane down. Break it down. <laughs> and then do a heavy metal detox smoothie because that is going to pull out the mercury that is feeding these pathogens and other heavy metals that they also thrive on. Yeah, and there's other things that pull he heavy metals out of the body. You know, yeah. we talked about that in uh, our last video we did on the air fresheners, the scented candles, the colognes, perfumes. At the mm -hmm. end, we go through some of the foods that remove these heavy metals. You're also going to want to lower your fats. That way your body can cleanse. We like to keep our fats kind of later in the day so it can cleanse without the fats morning and afternoon. And then you're going to definitely want to remove other troublemaker foods. So eggs are one of the troublemakers. And then there's all the other troublemakers that we've talked about before and that Anthony brings up that you're going to want to remove to keep the viruses at bay. Yeah, remember the eggs have a lot of protein, a lot of fat in it. So the fat creates insulin resistance, which mm -hmm. then doesn't allow the fruit to be properly absorbed into your cells. Right, and doesn't allow the fruit to do its job with knocking down the viruses. Totally. So, incorporate more fruits that remove viruses. Yep. And so what are some of those fruits? Um, pomegranates, wild blueberries, uh, papayas, raspberries, Apricots. Apricots, pomegranates, those are all really good virus knocking down fruits. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Those are like the top ones, but pretty much any fruit is going to help you. Mm -hmm. And then there's also vegetables too. And then incorporate more veggies. Mm -hmm. You know, veggies like potatoes. Potatoes have uh, natural lysine in it, and lysine knocks down viruses. Also bring in some sweet potatoes, you can bring in some kale, some fennel. Uh, sprouts, spinach are good ones, lettuce and asparagus. Those mm -hmm. are kind of like the top veggies to really knock down and help cleanse out those viruses yep. and, and bacteria. But all vegetables will also help you. And you can't forget the herbs. Oh yeah. You know, herbs like uh, celery, cilantro, parsley, garlic, ginger, and the lovely aromatic herbs, sage, rosemary, thyme, and oregano. And then there's also herbal tinctures, mm -hmm. which are those little tinctures you put under your, your tongue. We do a video with Medicine Man. Go check that if out. If you want to make your own, that'll, check it out. I'll teach you how to make your own. And then <laughs> uh, some of the herbal tinctures that knock down viruses are cat's claw. Mm -hmm. There's silver hydrosol, yeah. there's lemon balm, there's nettle. There's uh, elderberry syrup, red clover, mullein, uh, star anise. I think that is kind of like the top ones. Licorice root. Licorice root, yeah. And then we got wild foods, and wild foods are pretty great. Those are so powerful. And you've got wild foods like coconut, you've got Wild blueberries, red clover, plantain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, dandelion, which is something that people think is a weed, mm -hmm. but it's actually dandelion leaf is so powerful for you. you put that in your salads. Um, there's also seaweeds, so like the dulse that's in your heavy metal smoothie. We've got aloe vera, honey, uh, burdock root. Yeah, those are all great wild foods. Yeah. So. These are just some of the foods that you can be incorporating that are special foods that go after pathogens. So then there's supplements too, and these were some of the supplements that I was taking yeah. when I first got sick. Yep. So we were doing uh, L-lysine, we were taking a lot of zinc, we were doing ester C, uh, monolaurin, and curcumin. Yep. And those were some of the main supplements I was taking. We still take some of those today, but over time I've, I've been able to kind of weed myself off of some of these supplements and uh, incorporate some foods that have these things in them instead. 
But if you guys are dealing with like specific conditions, check out his new book, Cleanse to Heal, because he lists in the back section all sorts of different ailments, um, different health issues that people are dealing with, and lists specific supplements that will help with that. So that's a really great book to check out, and it's also jam-packed with ways to cleanse and heal your body. Well, there you go. So now you guys have the truth. Now you have the knowledge, and it's in your hands now. Yeah. You guys, now that you know this, you can remove those eggs, you can remove those troublemakers that you know are going to be feeding these pathogens, and then boost up your body and your immune system with the foods that are going to just let it, your body really thrive and be healthy. I know for us, we were consuming eggs for a lifetime till we had medical mediums information. Right. And we stopped and the results were fabulous. So it's really up to you guys now. So I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. Thanks for joining you guys. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, be sure to subscribe and like that little bell like that little bell hit that little bell to get notified every time we post a new video be sure to like this video and drop us some comments drop us some comments we love comments let um, us know what you thought of this whole podcast and if, uh yeah let us you, know if you have questions we're here for you yeah happy to to talk about it so thanks again you guys we'll see you later all right bye I know you don't know much about show business, but I'm trying to inform you. I think I've done more show business than you. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Way more.